rat. Come on. Are you coming in or are you gonna drown? Hey, come on. Okay, you're taking all day. Come on. What are you doing? Come on. Here. He knows there's someone else go. in here. Go. Go. Come on. Really? Here, figure it out. Hey, goon, why don't you go inside? Why don't you go inside? Bugaboo. Ah! It's all falling apart because it's raining. <sighs> Break sound, do you do want to walk backwards or forwards up the stairs? True. <laughs> no, I'll take the top and I'll walk backwards. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Pretty funny. It's easier to take up than a mattress. A king size mattress. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the less less rotten pellets. <laughs> It'll work. Beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm gonna silicone this down. Beautiful. Come on, before the tube runs out. Before the tube runs out. Yes. That's perfect. Yum. Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it that way. You going out there? Or you yeah, I'll go. There? Okay. Got it? Ish. Your fingers clear? Yeah, I'm just, uh, we must not be in the sill pan. So we're not in on one side of the sill pan then. Oh, which side? On the uh, west oh, side. I see. Something's hanging up the east side. It's not sliding over. You go towards the telehandler. Take the door. Yeah, there we go. Here, let's just come out to me. Okay. This is gonna suck. If you can just focus on the bottom of the door. Okay. Oh, stop, stop. I got my fingers clear now. Oh, okay. No. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put a screw in. Oh, <clears throat> I don't have a bit. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Come on. Ta -da! Well, it was sitting on there and I was trying to push it over, but it kept dragging Pulling the gear it, with I think because that 
threshold's got like, it's like extruded aluminum or something, so it's not flat. Right. So it probably caught it and then you had to like lift it up out of it or something stupid. Well, as soon as I got the flat bar on there and separated the door from the pan, it just popped Fell right, right in. in. Got so. it. So what I want to make sure is that this is sucked all the way up in that pan. Man, it got humid. Pretty dang happy already, so don't monkey with it too much. Um, let's see. Okay, do you want the one on the bottom? Or? Yep, we'll do bottom and middle. Dead on? Beautiful. It's good to me. Looks good for my house. Ooh, it's so close already. It's just gonna be a little, little touch. Well, I'm not touching it. There's no holes. There's no router marks, no nothing? No. What in the world? That guy was gone that day. I was supposed to do that. I never even noticed that. <laughs> I guess you put the cold door back on. I guess we're putting the cold door on. What in the freaking world? Uh, uh, well, like, I guess let's take this in and look at it closer. Well, and, and it's not even, it's not even holes. It's supposed to have an adjustable plate. These are adjustable plate doors. Oh. So there's supposed to be a plate back there that actually moves oh. that you can adjust the door seasonally. It's like, there's nothing. I don't even see where it would go. Like, uh -uh. it's not like this is like just a trim or anything. And it's not on the other side. It's not like to put them on the wrong side. It's like freaking expensive doors. And these aren't wood screws. They're machine screws. Cause they're supposed to be a metal plate. Oh. It goes metal to metal. Look at this door. I mean, this one just got holes drilled in it. Right, yeah, I see that. But there's actually a, a plate, a metal plate that goes behind here, and it can actually move independent of the, the door skin. Huh. And it allows you to adjust the door. Okay, going up. The good news is, it's just a door. So yeah. it's just a like a swap. You never know what you're gonna run into, right? Does this one close? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh. It's off. I had tons of lock sets just laying around from rentals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Found a couple that matched and threw them in these doors. It was really hard to find strike plates and stuff that matched. Yeah. If you want, I just, you know, like to get room in here. I mean, they can even stay up here if you need to. It doesn't matter to me. It's tempting to not put this in here because this isn't the permanent lock set, but it should be identical to whatever goes in here. Well, cool. not sure we traded up, but. <laughs> you trade. What are you doing? Hmm? Did you notice the new door? Did you notice that we downgraded our door situation? Yeah, do you like it better? There's more privacy. The deer, the deer can't see in here and harass you when you're napping. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have to, we have to finish installing it, okay? Because we're not quite done, okay? What's that? 
That's a forklift. Yeah, that's a forklift. Yep. Well, guys, <laughs> I actually thought we were going to get through this project without having any problems. If you haven't seen it, uh, we did another video where we installed the other brother to this door. It's also an exterior door. And it actually went pretty smooth, the jam and the door. That, that door gave us problems with the sill and the flashing on the bottom. If you haven't seen that video, give it a watch. There's actually this really lengthy backstory to these doors and all the lessons that we learned from the jams and the door selection and sills and my goodness, what an adventure. And here we are, I think the lesson with this one is we looked at the doors when we got them. We looked inside the packaging, yep, it's the right color, yep, it's got the right glass. But I didn't think to check whether there was holes for the hinges. The problem is this, this door, these doors, plural, they don't have, um, they're not wood. And so you don't just put a self-tapping wood screw in. Uh, here, let me go show you on the other door what's actually missing. And when you see it, it's super obvious. One of the premium features that we paid for on these doors is these metal plates right here. And what's behind here is actually an adjustable plate, which helps you to seasonally align the door as the building and everything moves with the heat and the cold. And these plates, which are super obvious on this door, are flat out missing on the other door. <laughs> what are you doing out there? Huh? Are you trying to get pets? If I didn't know better, I'd think you were trying to get pets. Huh? You want pets on the pallet? <laughs> you want pallet pets? I'm such a crazy mammal. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys haven't been following us for very long, you might not know that this cat last year while we were building our roof actually popped his head out at the end of a 42 foot telehandler boom. I was working in the man basket and the telehandler we were using had a very similar hole to this one. We were boomed all the way out and I heard him meowing. I look over and his head is sticking out of that hole at 42 feet. I thought, are you serious? And he walked all the way down the boom and jumped out of some holes that were at the end of the boom. I thought, how do you check equipment like that for a cat? I don't know. Okay, we seriously, we have to get work done. Seriously, what was that? What was that? Okay, all right, you hang out out there, okay? I had wondered whether the plates maybe were just under the spine and, and kind of, couldn't really remember how they evidenced. So when you look at this spine, there's nothing, there's nowhere to fasten on this guy. I thought maybe if I used a magnet, you know, I might be able to find if there was a metal plate back there somewhere and there's just nothing. And of course, once you look at the other door, that metal plate should be visible. You know, it's almost like it's, it's just missing. We feel like this is so representative of just building, I guess. Maybe, maybe we're unique in that way. Of course, we don't build a lot of homes, we're just building one. But there's been a common theme here. I, I don't think there's a single product that we've purchased for this home build yet that we didn't have some sort of problem with. Some of them were operator error, and we'll admit that. And some of this stuff is clearly something from the factory. So the next step here, we'll have to contact the company who we ordered this door through. I think the bad news is that we've had these doors sitting for several months and um, we're just hoping that they'll stand behind the product and make it right. We're assuming this door will have to be shipped back to the manufacturer, wherever that is. The good news is we have these cold doors, which if you watch the video where we installed the front exterior door, there's actually, a, it's actually a provision from the door manufacturer. They basically, as soon as you order these custom doors, it can take two to three months to get them. So they give you these banged up construction doors, which are just basically a steel security door, and they include it with your jam. So this jam comes within a week or two with this door. It gets you dried in, you're happy as a clam, and then within two to three months, your permanent door arrives, 
you remove it and take the cold door back. So we'll be returning that to the retailer where we got our doors. The good news is we didn't go through all that effort to install that jam for nothing. It's a bit of a downgrade. We lost the glass. It's a much less appealing door, but I guess the good news is we have something to put in this hole. What are you doing? Huh? Are you still out here? Where are you going? He's going for it, guys. Go for it. Funk. In case you guys were wondering if Tyvek is stronger than a Bengal cat, there's your answer. <laughs> so I was kind of curious how this sill plate, this stainless steel sill worked out. If you watch the video where we installed the sill on the other exterior door, th that one was quite a bit more difficult because of the concrete and the slope or the grade of the slab and all that. This one looks to me like it fits perfectly. It's probably too tight to the door. I guess in hindsight, I wish I would have ordered these to be the width of the rough opening, and then the door would just sit in that. Um, it looks like I ordered them to be the width of the door, but I like the way this lip hangs over the sip. So you've got a sill pan, You've got the sill flashing, which is, I think, 10 inch stretch tape. You got a layer of Vicor, and then finally this kind of draping flashing, which is the house wrap Tyvek. Uh, this is gonna get even more complicated when we go to attach the deck that we'll eventually build to the back of the house. But I think my main concern is that water that gets on this threshold here if it makes it through the threshold, it's gonna go into this sill pan. And because when we installed the sill uh, board, we sloped it out ever so slightly, in theory, that water should find its way out, down, down, and outside. Let's kind of take a look for just a second at a sip. It's, it's easy for us to assume that folks watching our videos now have seen all of our videos. And I guess if you wanted to, for funsies, you can go back and watch all that stuff. But one of the big challenges with the doors and windows and siding and other things with this house is these SIP panels. Let me kind of show you what a SIP looks like in case you don't know, and you'll immediately understand why this is such a critical detail for this house. So this is just a chunk of SIP or structural insulated panel. It is a core of foam that is bonded 
to OSB skins. There's a lot of terms out there for these things. That's kind of the, the nuts and bolts of the construction. So this wall that you're looking at looks like this. The problem is you can't really fix a SIP. It's not really repairable like a stick framed wall. So we're having to be extremely careful and probably overly tedious with the details where water can become an issue. If this were stick framed and we had some rot, we could simply remove the sheathing, cut out whatever damaged stud framing existed, remove the insulation, put it all back together. We're back in business. The thing with these panels is they are the walls. And if you go back and watch some of our SIP construction videos, you'll see that this really isn't something that can be fixed. It has to be detailed well. When it comes to flashings and house wrap and moisture and water and vapor, all these mitigations have to be applied. When you do that, I know it sounds really good right now, really bad right now, but when you do that, this is a very superior house envelope and uh, we hope to do more videos on this in the future. We collected data all winter long that I can't wait to share with you guys. And it's, it's pretty fascinating, even at this stage of the construction, how efficient, quiet, and comfortable the house is. Um, that might have been a spoiler. Sorry about that. Anyway, so that's what's underneath this door. So if you can imagine this threshold is sitting on top of this, there's a piece of lumber in here. And then, of course, we've... Uh, we flashed the sill and up the the trimmer and so in theory We're trying to get the water to go out because if water gets down in here as you guys know OSB even this stuff which is a different resin It's it's not gonna last it's gonna blow out and structurally it's gonna fail and it's gonna rot I think having these stainless steel sill pans custom manufactured you know, was worth it. it it's, it's really expensive in the context of the door. Probably 10% of the cost of this entire door is this sill pan. We made it more complicated. Again, refer back to that video on the other exter exterior door install and you'll see some of the lessons that we learned from this sill pan. But when you think of it in the context of the sips and the fragility or sensitivity uh, of the sips to moisture, the sill pan is, is cheap, really. Anyway, we'll see how that works long term. We hope that we never have to replace the sill. More importantly, we never have to deal with the sip again. You know what I just realized, guys, is I was gonna take the telehandler out from behind the house because we're basically done. We're done with this portion of the door install. But if you remember a few videos back, we were having problems with these little tiny birds called a nuthatch, a red-breasted nuthatch. They're about four and a half inches tall. And these pink dots that are on the side of the house, we spray painted those on there to mark the holes that we drilled to foam between the panels. For those who've been following us for a long time, it's getting really old hearing that story. Trust us, we live with it every day, so <laughs> we're with you on that. Well, they, they peck in these pink dots because they're a hole and they're trying to waller them out to build a nest. A couple months ago, I think something like that, I don't know, I decided to paint the, the uh, pink dots brown or tan to try to match the OSB. Lame strategy, I know. Didn't work. So I ended up covering the hole that they had had wallowed out the most with a piece of wood and wouldn't you know it they left they've been gone for quite a while i'm not sure a month or six weeks or something and the other morning we heard them back here so i came outside to watch them and see what they were doing and i'll be darned if they weren't going from pink hole to pink hole so i think i probably actually am better off leaving the telehandler back here because that's how we actually can reach this entire side of the house is by just booming around we either are going to have to spray paint the pink and try that again or we may end up having to cover those holes temporarily to keep the birds from nesting in them we would hope that given the fact that it's almost summertime or getting close to summertime maybe they'll you know shoo and and build a nest elsewhere speak of spring look at this little guy <laughs> 